Halloween's coming up and Darksiders 2 is being re-released today, so here's a video I've wanted to do for ages that's scythe and vaguely Halloween themed. No, it's not totally forced and contrived at all, I don't know what you're talking about. First off, here's some honourable mentions. Osiris from Demon Sea Devil May Cry. It's alright, the bone skin for it looks really cool, but it's actually really, 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 really weak, and is probably the worst weapon in the game, aside from, I don't know, Kablooey. It's better than PlayStation All-Stars. So picture this, you're playing Ninja Gaiden 2, you're going through Venice, fighting werewolves, slicing the motherfuckers to pieces, then you come across this big, massive werewolf with four arms, and then you beat him, you take his scythe off him, and then your character fucking slices a werewolf in half in a cutscene, grabs onto a helicopter with it, and gets flown away to an airship, and then you just go around dominating guys with this badass scythe. I mean, it's so awesome they made a big deal out of it on the game's cover and in the initial CG trailer. They knew the thing was awesome. And then they brought it back for Ninja Gaiden 3's re-release because the original was stupid and didn't have any other weapons and that's all I'll say about that game. Number 5. So Soul Calibur 3 introduced this guy called Zaslamel. He's the first black character in Soul Calibur. He's bald, he's got this awesome golden eye. He basically just wants to destroy everything because he can't die permanently because he reincarnates all the time. And he goes around with this massive scythe. He's awesome. And then he turns to the final boss and his scythe turns to this other monstrous thing and he transforms and he's even more awesome. But I can't get footage for it so you'd have to watch Soul Calibur 4 footage of him using the weapon. And then they got rid of him from Soul Calibur 5 even though his reincarnation thing means they could have literally brought him back as a 14 year old girl with massive tits and it would have made total sense. But Namco fucked everything up because that's what Namco does. Number four, Dead Rising has tons of awesome weapons. So just imagine you find a scythe to cut zombies down, but you realise that the scythe, there's something missing. It's not quite what you'd hope. I mean, it's got some decent moves, but it's just missing that little something extra. And then you find out it can be used to make combo weapons. In Dead Rising 3, that includes one that releases death spores that fucking kills everything and one that sets things on fire. Fire! It's awesome! Just be careful you don't throw it away and leave yourself defenseless, because that happens sometimes. Number three. So they wanted to do the crossover between Dynasty Warriors and Samurai Warriors, which were over a thousand years apart, so they needed to have a character who could bring these forces together, and that's where Orochi comes in. He's a serpent king, and he has a huge scythe, and he just twats basically the entire cast of both game series. Then they come back and beat him and he dies and then he comes back from the dead and then he dies again and then a god of destruction takes his form to destroy the world and it dies. But he has an awesome moveset and when he's in his second form he just destroys everything. He's like top tier. Number two. I mean obviously I was going to include a form of death on this list somewhere. There's no way I could not include a version of death and Darksiders is here not just because Darksiders is being re-released today featuring Death in the awesomely named Definitive Edition, like unironically I love that name, but Death is also such an awesome character and he uses two of them. I was kind of tempted to put on the one from the first game that he lends to his brother War, but you know that's not used as a dual wielding thing so here is dual scythes, awesomeness. I've not yet decided at the time of recording which scythe in particular I'll be putting on this list so I'll look through some pictures and display it for you now because there's probably a really good one in there somewhere, I don't know. And the number one scythe in video games is, when it comes to scythes you kind of need a really cool design for the pole part of it because otherwise it looks kind of boring. And since it's usually associated with death and he is often a skeleton man, what better way to design a scythe for death than to make it a friggin' spinal column? And that's what they did for Dante's Inferno. A lot of people said, oh, the game is just a God of War ripper, but fuck God of War. God of War is shit. The main character is a twat. Then you got Dante's Inferno, this guy, voiced by Gray McTavish, who is awesome, comes in, fights death, beats the shit out of him with a halberd, takes his scythe, splits him in two, kills death with his own weapon, he is awesome. And then he goes to hell and uses that same scythe to beat up the devil. He beats up death and the devil with death's own scythe. That, my friends, is hardcore. So that's my list. I put no effort into this video. If you think it's shit, piss off. Oh, and happy Halloween or whatever. Prepare.
prepare for your funeral. Oh! <laughs> 